picture this. One day your boss walks into your office, asks you, can you collect the information that's on a website and stick it into Excel? My name is Brad Dara, and in this tutorial, I'll show you how you can easily get Power Automate to look at a website, capture the information from it, and save it into an Excel workbook. Let's learn. So what I want to do in this tutorial is I want to be able to capture the information for city populations for the state of New York, let's say, for example. So I've got this web page, and what it lists are all the cities within the state of New York. I can scroll down here. There's over 1,700 of them. So what I want Power Automate to do is I want Power Automate to, first of all, open up this page, go to this specific section, and capture two columns, the name of the city and then the population. After I've captured that information from the web page, what I then want to do is I want to open up a new Excel workbook and enter all that information from this, these two columns here into an Excel uh, sheet within that workbook and then save it. So how do we do that? Let's first of all, I'm going to um, copy the URL for this particular website. Copy and I'll close it off. And let's start up Power Automate. New flow. And the name of this new flow is going to be Capture New York Populations. Population. Okay, so we're ready to begin creating our new flow. The first thing I want to do is I want to create a couple of regions. Regions are, think of it as like sections within your flow that encapsulate specific actions for whatever you're trying to accomplish. So what we're trying to basically accomplish here is we want to open up a website and we want to capture and store information in Excel. So I can um, click on here and enter in for a search term region. And what it's going to do is it's going to filter out and just show me the action, the region actions. So I'm going to click and drag a region over into my canvas here. And the first region is going to be called open website. Click save. And you can see what it does is it creates a, a beginning and an ending. So whatever's within these two tags here are specifically just for opening up the website. Now, the second thing I want to do in a little bit is I want to be able to capture and store the information in Excel. So I'm going to create another region and call it Capture and Store in Excel. And so let's focus on opening up the website. Well, before we open up the website, we need to have a URL. Remember, I captured it or I copied it before I closed the browser down before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable called URL. Go into the variable section, set variable, click that, drag that into here. And the URL, or sorry, the variable name is going to be called URL. And the value is going to be what we copied, which was this URL. Okay, so if I go back into my actions and I can type launch to quickly go to the launch actions and the one I want is here, launch new Microsoft Edge. Click and drag that underneath here. I want to launch a new instance. The initial URL is going to be the variable that we had just set up here. So on the a variable picker, click on this, select URL. And then the window state, we want to maximize the page after it's been opened. Click on maximize. URL. So I'm going to create a new variable. The variable name is going to be called state. And it's going to be called new dash York. Save. And now what we want to do is we want to go into the variable that actually specifies the URL and replace this New York with the variable name state. So don't click on it. Highlight it. Go to my variable picker, select state. And now we're good. So let's save the state of this workflow, test it just to make sure that it's doing what we expect it to do. Hit save. And let's run it. Hmm. 
Okay. So far, so good. It did exactly what we wanted to do. Now, one more thing to note on this particular page is that it's got a filter for the number of cities that you can be displayed. By default, when you come to this page, it's going to show anything that has 6,000, a population of 6,000 or more. But what we want to do is we want to capture all of the cities. So to do that, you would select the drop down and select all cities. So this is what we want Power Automate to do. So we have to go back to our, our, our flow and have it identify this drop down and specify all cities. So let's do that. I'm going to leave this open. Now what I want to do is I need to capture that UI element. So I go into the UI elements view and click on add UI element. It's going to bring up the UI element picker. I'm going to bring back my website. So it's in the foreground. What I need to do is I need to capture this drop down. So hover over it, hold down the control the key on my keyboard, left mouse click, and it's going to capture that element on the page. And you can see that it's done it in the top right hand corner here. Click on done. And there's the all cities uh, UI element. What I want to do before we begin is I want to make it a little bit more meaningful what this UI element is. So I'm going to rename it to drop down cities filter. Hit enter. Great. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to set that drop down. Okay. So if I go to the browser automation section under web form filling, I can say, I'm going to widen this up a little bit here. I can say set drop, drop down value for a set drop down list value on a web page. This is what we want to do. So we want to click and drag this right underneath after we've opened up the browser. And now what we want to do is we want to select that drop down that we've just collected or captured, select it. And then the operation, what we want to do is we want to specify the option by name. And the option that we wanted to specify was all cities. Click save. Okay. Let's close it off and let's make sure that it works. Okay, so, so far so good. It came in after it opened up the browser, went to this website, and then selected all cities for the dropdown. And it's gonna specify all 1700 cities within New York State. Okay. There's one more thing we need to do now for the website is we need to extract the data from it. And what we're looking to extract is the name of the city, this column of information, and then the population for each corresponding city. So to do that, going back to Power Automate, Within the, browser automation, within the browser automation section underneath web data extraction, there's an action that allows us to quickly and easily capture information from a large table within a website. And that action is called extract, da extract data from web page. So I'm gonna click and drag that and I wanna put it right underneath where I specified the dropdown. Okay. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna bring up this panel here. And then it says, bringing an actual web browser to the foreground while this dialog is open will activate the live web helper. So we wanna leave this up. And now what we wanna do is we wanna to go to the web page, open it up. Okay. And then we have this dialog box come up, live web helper. So now what this is gonna do is it's gonna, um, allow me to be able to specify the information that I want to extract. If I hover over the first city, there's going to be a, um, a red box that surrounds it. If I right click, let's try it again. If I right click, I can say extract element value. And I can say, I want the text. This is the name of the city. Click. And it's recorded as the, the town of Accord. Now what I want to do is I want to say, this is the associated population with it. I right click again, extract element value, and then the population. And now it's collected both of them. This is the key thing. Now, if I select the one underneath it, atom center, do the same exercise, right click, extract element value, text. Now when I hit the refresh, it gives you a preview of what it's going to find. Now what it's saying 
as you can see, there's a green dotted line around all of the values within the table. So Power Automate was smart enough to know that I want to be able to select these two columns of information from this table. So now it's got the, the, the name of the city, the city name, and then the population. It's defaulted the column headers to value number one, value number two, but you can change that. You can double click and I'm going to say city and then double click this column and this is going to be called population. Okay, and then click finish. It's just that easy. So now what it's going to do is after it opens up the web page and changes the filter for us, it's going to be able to collect all of that information and store it into a variable called data from web page. We can rename this. I'm going to leave it as is right now. Data from web page and click save. Okay. Let's close the browser and run it and let's see what happens. Okay, looks like it's done. If I go back to Power Automate, it's finished. But now you'll notice on my variable section, we have a variable called data from web page. It now says that there's 1,741 rows and two columns. If I double click it, now I have a variable representation, a data table within Power Automate that represents the city and population. It's essentially scraped that information from the website. Okay. Now we're done with the, the first section here, which is to deal with opening up the website and collecting the information. Now I'm gonna jump into how do we open up Excel and take the information that we've collected and save it within an Excel workbook. So let's start with that. Okay, so now that we finished with the opening up of the, work, of the website, I can collapse that. And that's what's really good about these regions is that you can collapse a region so it's a little more cleaner and a little bit more efficient to work with. So now I know that these two, the, the, the actions within this region are just specifically for opening up the website and capturing the information. Now what I want to do is I want to work on the Excel part of this. So what I need first is I need to specify an Excel file workbook name. So I'm going to create a new variable. Slip it right into there. And the variable name is going to be called Excel file name. And now the value that I want to specify is the, the path. I want to say C colon backslash. Temp, my temp directory. And then the name of this workbook is going to be called state populations. Dot X L S X. Okay. So now we have an Excel file name. Now what we want to do is we want to launch Excel. So if I go collapse that, collapse that and go into Excel, There's an action called Launch Excel. Click and drag that underneath here. Okay, what we're dealing with is we're dealing, we're gonna create a new document. So we're dealing with a blank document. So I click Save. Okay. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna specify the headers for the information that's gonna be copied into this Excel workbook. The headers are going to be called city and population. So now what I have to do is I have to specify another variable. I'm going to call it header. Okay. Now for the header, what I want to do is I want to specify it, but you have to specify it as a, uh, as a, essentially a array. Okay. So then first of all, it's going to be uh, I put a percent sign to indicate that it's a variable, and then I put squiggly bracket, and then square bracket, and then I put a, a single comma, or a single quote, rather, call it city. That's the first header. The second one, because it's comma delimited, is going to be called population. No quote square bracket, squiggly bracket, and then percent sign to close it off. Okay, so that's gonna be our header. 
it'll make sense in a moment once we open up the worksheet and then I'll, I can specify what gets written there. The next thing I need to do is I need to, now that I've got the Excel open, it's opened up, uh, a, by default, it's opened up a tab called Sheet 1. But what we want to do is we want to create a new worksheet, add a new worksheet called State. Okay. So if I go into back into Excel and I want to add a new worksheet, click it right there. And the name of the worksheet is going to be called State. Okay. Add worksheet as the last worksheet. First sheet, and then it becomes State. And then we'll click Save to that. And then what we want to do is we actually want to delete the, the default worksheet called Sheet 1. So we want to delete. So the, the, the delete action for Excel is under Advanced. Delete Excel worksheet. Click that, drag that underneath there. And we have to specify the worksheet name. Sheet 1. And click Save. Okay. And then what we want to do is after we've specified that is that we want to write the header. That's going to be the first row within our worksheet. The header is going to be what we specified up here, which was the, uh, the city and the population. So now we want to specify the write action. We want to write to the, sh to the sheet and write to Excel worksheet. Okay, the value we want to write is the header, because that's the first row. And the write mode is going to be on the specified cell. And the column that we're going to specify is column starting at column A and row 1, which is the, top, which is the very, very top left corner of the worksheet. Okay, specify save. Now, before we begin to any further, what we can do is we can actually see if it's actually doing what we expect it to do. So what I want to do is I want to run this, but I don't necessarily want to run the part where it opens up the browser and it does all the capture. But what I want to do is I just want to specify that it runs the Excel part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my region that, that defined opening up the, the web page. I'm going to highlight all these steps and I'm going to disable them. So what this does is that it'll make them gray. And what it'll do is when I run this particular flow, it's going to start at, at action number nine and then continue on and actually open up the Excel workbook. So I'm going to hit save. And let's run it. Now what should happen is that Excel should come to the forefront. And you can see it actually happened pretty quickly. But what it did is it actually created a new tab or a new worksheet called state. It deleted the existing sheet called sheet number one, and it's added a city and a population, basically a header for this particular web sheet or you know, worksheet. Uh, and now we now it's prepared. So now we can keep we can take the information that we captured earlier and now write it to this worksheet within the Excel workbook. Okay. So I'm going to say close to this and I'm going to say don't save. So I'm going to re-enable these. And I'm going to do another write to Excel worksheet action. What is the value I want to write? I want to write the one that we captured, which is the uh, data from web page. I say data from web page on a specified cell. Now what I want to do is I want to again specify as column A, which is the very leftmost column. But now I want to start to write on row number two because row number one had the header. Now it's going to say whatever's in that variable called data from web page, write it starting at A2. Hit save. Save it and let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so now, as you can see, if I double click this and open it widen up, it's taken the information from that website in the background here, captured it, essentially scraped the information off the website, 
and then created a new Excel workbook and it stored all of this information for every one of the cities, including the population. And if I scroll right to the bottom, there should be over 1,700 of them. There it is right there. It's capturing information. Now, just for a little bit of house cleaning or housekeeping rather, what we want to do is now we want to close off Excel and then close the browser and then our flow should be completed. So I'm going to say, don't save to this, close this. Okay. So now close Excel. And what we want to do is before closing Excel, we want to save the document, save the document as, and the name of the document that we want to save it is where we specified it up here, which is the Excel file name. This is the variable. So then I can sp specify the uh, variable picker, Excel file name, select, and we say save. And then the final step is we need to close our browser down. So if I go to browser automation, say close browser, put it right underneath here. Close the browser. All right. One final save. We'll run it. But what we're going to do is instead of running it in the design view, I'm going to close this flow off. Close my browser. And now that we've got our flow at the top here, I want to run it from, from within the uh, our automate main, main page here. So I can hit the run. And we'll see how long it takes to actually complete the steps. Populates the information, saves the Excel workbook, closes the browser down, and it all did it within 39 seconds. Now, to make sure that it actually did what we expected to do, I can now go into File Manager, go into the Temp Directory, State Populations, double click on it, and voila. We've captured all information off of that web page for that particular state in this workbook here. And it's just that easy.